Uh, sound check one two sound check should see the screen and uh, audio coming through awesome David thank you thank you traders thank you I think we got uh, confirmation there I want to thank everyone for uh, taking their time and uh, you know we know you have choices each and every day and uh, and where you spend your time and uh, and uh, and so we're just very appreciative of your time today um, you know we're, we're here with our, our friends at mr. top step and we're gonna be discussing uh, discussing uh, some book map uh, hang on one second said the uh, mics a little hot how about now Jerry how's that sound am I swallowing the microphone there we go. A little better there. Thank you guys for letting us get this uh, sweet, sweet. Well, we got this lined out for you guys. Again, uh, I just want to extend, uh, you know, just a hearty welcome to everyone and uh, and just uh, awfully, uh, awfully kind and gracious of our partners, Mr. Top Steph, to put this together for us. I understand Danny Boy's uh, out of action today, a little... Uh, uh, a little power internet uh, uh, issue uh, in the office today, and so uh, um, unfortunately uh, we won't be uh, be having his color added to the presentation today. Um, you, you're just stuck with the dumb Texan, and so uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll jump right in. Uh, my name is Jim Harrison. I'm with a company called Velox Pro. Our product is Bookmap. Uh, it's called Bookmap X-Ray. We're going to look at a, a bunch of uh, different uh, things today, but I'm going to walk you through a, a little journey, and then uh, towards the end, we'll go look at some live markets together and see what we've got uh, going there this afternoon. So, trading futures and options on futures involves substantial risk of loss, not suitable for all investors. You should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in a lot of your circumstances, knowledge, financial resources. You may lose all or more of your money, and so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, opinions, market data, and recommendations subject to change at any time, and trust me, they will. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Hey, so, so we'll scoot on to the next slide here. Hey, here's this, uh, uh, should be in the side pocket. No, no, sorry about that. Well, hang on, hang on traders, just one second. Okay, so uh, here I am. Here's my contact information. This is my email address um, and, and my and my Twitter handle as well. Um, make sure if you have any questions uh, following the session today, thank you so much. If you have any questions following the session today, uh, send me a direct email. Love to love to answer your questions. Um, and, and always, as always, encourage you to follow me on uh, Twitter at Bookmap X Ray. Um, you, you notice the the picture's a little different here. This is uh, this is me, a little younger, a little thinner. Yeah, the hair's a little darker. Um, but this is me without book map, and, and this is what at least I, I think I look like, or at least I feel like um, when I'm using a book map. Uh, just just got the force, and so uh, let's go through what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover a quick introduction to book map. Uh, we'll talk about what Bookmap is. Uh, we'll also discuss in detail what it's not. And, and then finally, uh, we'll move into how you can easily add advanced limit order book analysis to your existing trading plans and setups. So let's talk about what, what Bookmap is. Uh, it really is a, a, a very clever uh, invention. And, and so what it was born in the HFT world, uh, needing to time order packets from point A to point B at a sub-second level. And so when we talk about uh, sub-second levels, we're talking about uh, um, you know, uh, time stamps that have 12 decimals uh, inside the second. And that, that's a picosecond. Nine decimals is uh, nano, six is micro, three is milliseconds. Uh, most non-direct market access uh, participants uh, have time stamps in the millisecond range. And so uh, what we do is we combine the historical action of the limit order book because uh, those of you that have been around for a while and have traded for a while, you've probably noticed uh, numbers in your price ladder that flash uh, and disappear and up and down. And so we're, we're, we're taking every single event, every message um, in the lit order book and we're, we're showing you that historically so as you look at this image here uh, over here on the left you see a, as it's kind of dark in this area and then it gets brighter right here liquidity was added to the order book here here you see liquidity getting brighter price pushes up into it it trades and then it gets a little brighter as price pushes away you notice here how it's kind of getting a little darker as price is pushing towards it so a few folks getting out of the way there 
And so showing that evolution of the limit order book adds a lot of insight that was never before seen. And, and uh, understanding what bookmap is at a granular level really helps us differentiate from uh, potential copycats or, or other things that you may see out there that are of a lesser granular quality. Bookmap really is two layers. You have a CEP engine or a complex event processing engine. And this this is event driven and it handles uh, millions of messages uh, each and every day very efficiently. It takes about uh, 500 gigabytes of memory and about 1% of CPU um, on an average load of say five to seven symbols. And so a very, very light footprint. Then on top of that, uh, you, you get to see the map. And this is just the visual, visualization layer, okay? And so uh, um, f about half a gig of memory, Paul, about half a gig, 500 megabytes, if I misspoke, thank you for correcting me there. And, and then what you see is the visualization layer on top. And then you can choose how often you want to refresh the visualization layer, but it doesn't affect the actual data underneath that. That's very important when you look at other copycat type uh, platforms and other things out there that, that may look similar, but in reality, a huge difference. And then finally, um, we're just going to show you the facts. And, and uh, on a day, uh, on a very heavily traded volatile day on the S&P 500, um, maybe three to five percent of the messages on uh, on an average day are, are trade messages. The, the the rest of the information is the information that's being crunched in real time by the supercomputing power of the HFT contingency out there. And so, being able to give you that glimpse and that insight into that. So, so what do you need to to get uh, Bookmap started? Now, we were again, we were born in the in the HFT space, so. Our, our, the, the bulk of our life experience as a company has been dealing with um, those direct market access participants, those that run their own ticker plants, um, exchanges, et cetera. As we expand our offering to include those who, that are outside of that, uh, that, that upper echelon of internal infrastructure and technology, um, we've partnered with a lot of powerful industry uh, leaders uh, to bring you access to Bookmap. So CQG Continuum Data, obviously one of them. Uh, TT, or Trading Technologies API. Um, Rhythmic R Plus is another one. Uh, the S5 Trader from uh, Stage 5 Trading. DTNIQ, um, Ninja Trader, and, and then Transact, or, or the, the data that we currently power. But now, if you're in a prop environment and you have your own ticker plant, obviously we can talk. We can put a, an appliance on your, your ticker plant and, and power book map from your internal data. Then finally, interactive brokers as well. So I, IBTWS uh, is also supported. So what Bookmap is not? No, Bookmap is is definitely uh, definitely not. Oops, definitely not the Holy Grail. And so for those of you that are going to be disappointed by that, um, I, I apologize. I, I've got Still looking for the Holy Grail. Um, a, a little humor from our, our friends at uh, Monty Python. Uh, I'll let you digest that for a moment before we move on. <laughs> so, uh, more realistically, what Bookmap is not? This isn't your your grandfather's charting platform. And so, uh, again, we, we we really call it, we call it an advanced tickless charting. So, with Bookmap, you have the ability to you, you kind of sit above events and above time. And you have the ability to zoom in and out to, to really see and, and to find the information uh, that you're looking for in real time. And so um, th there's two layers, the CEP uh, data uh, collection engine. And, and then the visualization layer, uh, if you have some, some recent technology, you know, you know, a video card that was born in the last two years, it's probably utilizing GPU. GPU versus CPU, I mean, it's just much faster, just much faster. Don't worry if, if you don't have that newer technology. We've got we've got a, a version of Bookmap that runs just fine on older, slower machines. So 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 don't believe the hype. It works just great. But at the end of the day, if you have some of the newer technologies, Bookmap is going to utilize those and, and pass that on to you. So at the end of the day, we're we're looking for actionable intelligence. And so what what's the short list of things that Bookmap? You know, hey, great, I signed up for this webinar. Um, you know, what what can Bookmap do for me? Okay, so. You know, we're looking at a short list of questions, and then we derive from that the implications that we can act on. So what's the total size at any particular level in the book? 
uh, algorithmic traders, uh, spread traders, um, traders in general, uh, we're looking for bids and offers to lean against. If we're wrong, we, we, we want to know that there's an exit door that, that we can fit through in a, a short period of time. And so being able to see what the total size at any level is important. Now, you see that information flashing in your dome, but be able to see it at a sub-second level in the heat map and how it evolves over time builds a, 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 just a huge amount of confidence in how this data is being handled and, and how we're classifying this information in real time. So what does this match my action zone levels? Everybody's got levels, floor traders, pivots, Fibonacci, the sun, the moon, the stars, doesn't matter, Ichimoku, Bollinger Band, RSI, divergence with double bottom, double top, uh, whatever. But, you know, does this match my action zone level? So it, price is moving into an area that I'm wanting to, to participate. I need to look to the book and I need to see if I'm the only guy at that party, it's going to be a bad party for me, I would imagine. So I'm looking for other participants. I'm looking for size in those levels. I also want to know if it's built from one or more orders. Um, the, the fact that it's built from a single order or, or a large lot at any particular level, you know, that, that gives me a different confidence level versus numerous orders at a level. And a great example of that is if, you know, if we look at this image here, and let's say the, the offer here is made up of one guy. Well, if this one guy modifies or cancels his order, modifies price to a different level or cancels that order, well, then the auto, automatically the new best offer is going to be one tick up. So being able to spot and highlight those areas where there's just a single participant or multiple participants obviously gives us deeper insight. Next thing that, that Bookmap answers emphatically down to the picosecond timestamp, if that's what you have, is when did the orders arrive in the live book? Okay. And by the live book, each exchange transmits a, a different number of levels above and below the current best bid or offer. CME transmits 10 for most things. ISO will transmit 20 uh, above and below on a few things. Um, a CME gives 10 on each side of the, the BBO. Uh, your X will offer 20 for the bun, the bobble, the DAX, and so um, different levels. But, but when did it arrive? Okay. So if it's new paper versus what we term resting paper, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So, so resting paper is, again, as is, is, is price moves towards an area in the book, it stays lit up. It, it's resting there. It, it's showing you that its intent at that moment in time is that it wants to trade. Most of these markets are FIFO markets. Some are pro rata or a hybrid like notes. But for, for most of the FIFO markets, 95% of the game today is getting to the front of the line. And so uh, being able to differentiate between short-term market-making activity versus longer time frame sizable resting paper um, obviously gives us uh, additional insights as well. Are there additional lit areas above and below? So, so is there a layer uh, of liquidity that's ready to absorb any new move up or down at any particular point? You know, and so uh, very important because longer time frame participants, uh, um, the, those uh, that uh, the, the type that you know, Danny used to fill in the pit of institutional type. These guys will buy VWAP for a five-day period as the market just falls and falls and falls. Um, uh, do you see other areas in the book that they're, 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 they're showing, that they're, they're willing to step in and make that market and, and to provide liquidity? When price advances towards levels that are lit up in the book, what information can you garnish? Is liquidity being added? So price is pulling down, it's retracing down. Um, as it's retracing down, and you're adding, do you see others coming into the book willing to get to the front of the line to buy as it comes towards them? Liquidity being added to the book on retracements, either bullish or bearish retracements, it is showing you again that, that the early adopters, it'll, it'll point out that, that first spot that uh, uh, those with the, ri the, the, the biggest um, uh, risk appetite are, are willing to step in. Yeah. Is the liquidity being pulled as price is pushing away? Does the book go dark? Does it just clear out? Does it do all the, does the liquidity vaporize and, and price just sweep directionally? Does it trade? Okay. Does it trade? Very, very clear. Very, very clear. You, you'll be able to answer emphatically not only does it trade, but the number of trades, the number of 
contracts that traded, and, and uh, to the best extent, properly classified aggressor classification. Did they cross the spread and lift the offer or cross the spread and hit the bid? We'll, we'll dig into some granular details here in just a minute. So when it does trade, what can I ask? How many discrete trade events? How many contracts traded? How many quotes refreshed? Okay, and again, this is a big number. When when you look at some of the games that that are played at the the sub second level, um, you, you'll hear terms like quote stuffing and things like that. You know, being able to see and to count the number of refreshes gives you insight into that information. What does that aggressor classification show? Does it show a balanced market? Does it show you know an equilibrium of of buyers and sellers collectively, or or is it imbalanced? You know, those of you that subscribe to profile theory. Um, yeah, you, you'll know what I'm referring to, okay? And so if it's imbalanced, then, then you ask a question, okay, is this the, the beginning of the next leg? Are we creating a new value area? Or, or am I actually looking at stuck or, or hung uh, traders, okay? And so, uh, and, and traders, I, I, uh, I appreciate the questions. Keep them coming in. I see them, uh, Jesse and, and Pepe. Um, uh, I'll, I'll pause here in just a minute and answer those. I'll answer the ones that I see here. Are we connected to trade session? No. Um, the, the list, uh, I just gave you the list that we are, and it's available on our website, bookmap.com forward slash platforms, um, or just go to bookmap.com and click on platforms, and you'll see every data feed that we're connected to. Um, again, if you're a proprietary trader or own a proprietary trading shop or, or a bank exchange, uh, we, we have appliances that we can install in your uh, trading arena to assist you. Uh, if you're a retail trader, um, then you, you'll need to use one of the supported platforms. Pepe says, can you use it on FTSE? If you can get the symbol, Pepe, you can use it on whatever. Okay. So uh, we, we, we're, we're not a data feed. We're not a data provider. We're not vendor of record for anyone. Uh, that's the, one of the great advantages to Bookmap is you're already paying for this data. Um, you just have a, a horrible time seeing it. And no way to analyze that, and that's what Bookmap's bringing to the table for you. And then finally, you want to ask, what, what's the other side doing? Are they being passive or aggressive? The slope of this order book, the, the slope of the orders in the book, okay, um, the, the slope of that order book is going to uh, dictate the, the aggression. So, so, so um, we'll talk a little bit about that, but looking at the example here that I have, and, and uh, just a bad image, we'll find a better example here in a minute, but uh, you, you'll see that uh, you know, what, what you've got is a, you know, the best offer, the best bid. The closer price in the book, the closer the liquidity is in the book, and the closer it's in the book to the BBNO, the more aggressive it is. So as it trades, do they get aggressive on the other side? Do they start pushing directionally? And does, is that sustained aggression? Or is it more of a passive activity? And so we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit more. Let's go ahead and get you lined up to some things that uh, you're probably a little more familiar with, the traditional price ladders and domes. This is the MD ladder. It's a patented piece of technology from uh, Trading Technologies uh, just right down the street from where I'm sitting right here today. Um, uh, great software. Uh, you know, you, you'll walk into a, a lot of shops and banks and desks, and and you'll see this uh, from the the retail uh, crowd all the way up to the institutional crowd. But uh, well, I'm not here to talk about TT. I'm really here to talk about the depth of market and uh, levels and and how Bookmap brings that to life. And so lining this up for you over here on our our traditional price ladder or dome window. This is the again the TT MD ladder. Here at the top right, you see 863 contracts being offered at 62 quarter. We're going to come right over here and we're going to line that up right here. Notice right above this is a white line. This white line tells you the top of the lit book. This white line down here shows you the bottom of the lit book. You have 838 being bid at 57.50. Over here you see 838 being bid at 57.50. Okay. And then, of course, you see the best bid here is 59.75, which is right here at this level. And then right above that is the best offer. Okay, So, so this is the information. So if you've ever seen a, a price ladder dome, then you can look right over here in our, in our current order book column or our COB column and immediately line yourself up to what you're looking at here. And this is real important, especially as you're getting acclimated to, to Bookmap, because like we said, it, it's definitely not your grandfather's charting tool. And so let's talk about what Bookmap shows you that is live versus historical data. 
Okay, so anything in this square right here. So we know that this is the bottom of the lip book. This is the top of the lip book. This is the best bid, best offer. This red number over here is going to show you last traded volume. Okay, and this is what we call our vertical timeline. So this is where all the trades will take place. It's right on this vertical line. And the trades are historical. So we'll show you those in just a second over here in the historical part. So what you see here is the depth at each market. And it's very cleverly, and, and it, it's not just a, a, a one for one. There's some very sophisticated algorithms behind here that, that make this, this uh, machine language human readable and using the heat map. But, but as you look at the heat map, you'll see 514 being offered at 58. And it's, and it's rather bright compared to the other levels. As a matter of fact, in the lit book right now, these uh, 20 levels of price activity, it's the brightest area. It's the largest area of liquidity in the book right now is at 58. Underneath price, the second largest is going to be this 54 quarter. I can see that at a glance. I can see at a glance a little more here than we have here uh, going up to here. So the slope of this book would be normalized. The, you see the, the angle of these, uh, these bars over here. The COB column or current order book column, you can display numbers or a histogram type of bar. And so in this instance, you're seeing everything that is being real time. And then over here, we have columns that dictate trade activity and other things. So this shows you what's going on in real time. Now this is going to show you the historical piece of action. Okay, from, from here, every time a trade takes place, a, a dot is placed. Now it's not a dot per trade. You, you have to understand. And this is kind of difficult for a, a lot a lot of traders that, that, that don't have the background in HFT or electronic trading at, at, at very high speed, that, that, that there's not a dot for each uh, trade. Um, I, I can show you examples of, you know, literally, and I will show you examples of, of hundreds of thousands of contracts trading in a period of where you can't blink your eye and see them. So um, it's very important, and we very cleverly have a way that we consolidate this information for you. We don't aggregate. We don't chop off any data. We're not going to label the last interval. We, again, we sit above that information. So here is everything that's historical. Every dot, you notice that some dots are bigger. That's more volume. Some dots are more transparent. That means there are more trades at that level. But if a thousand discrete events take place at the within 50 milliseconds and you're looking at a minute or, or 20 seconds of time, then, then obviously no way for me to draw you a dot for each uh, each event. But I'll show you here in a little bit when we get to the live market uh, uh, how you can filter these things, and that's one of the things that I really like. Now the historical best bid and offer line, the green line is your best bid. The the oh dark brown line here in this example is uh, is your best offer, and obviously all the colors uh, can be customized to your liking. And the grayscale again represents the, each level's historical liquidity. So you put this together, you know, on the right hand side, you have user defined columns. You can really build a super dome that does whatever you would like it. You have the real time price area. If you use a book map for trading, you can actually just click right here on the map and, and, and execute trades. If you do that, then this is the area between here and here that you would do uh, for that. And then again, trades are going to occur right on this line here. And then this is all historical activity here. Notice the, the shadowing effect here of the algos. That's important. We'll, we'll cover that here in just a minute. So uh, lining it up again, very simple. Here's the top of the book, the bottom of the book. Here's the best offer, best bid. And so again, the columns are completely customizable. You can make it look however you would like. Liquidity is increasing in these areas. It's going from darker to brighter. That's liquidity increasing. Okay, Going from brighter to darker is liquidity decreasing. Okay, so, so we see as an example, this is a fairly bright area in the book. And I've got the brightness turned down to where I'm just seeing the, the thickest levels here. And, and so I see that 858 are available at 53. I see 922 available at 6075. And 1718 available at 1860 here. Okay, And so again, from one to the other to the other. Heat map represents, again, both historical and real-time size shown for all levels of the limit order book. Levels with higher liquidity or brighter, lower liquidity or darker. 
I'm going to keep hammering that until you get that. That's that's the whole concept. So you look here, you see this level is being offered at 64 with this much liquidity. And at this moment in time, liquidity was pulled from the market. How do I know that? It went from bright to dark. Here, you see liquidity being added from the in the book. It goes from dark to light. And you also notice that this is what we call stable, consistent, resting paper. Okay, Consistent liquidity, been in the book for a long time. As price approaches it, it doesn't get out of the way. Great example of some resting paper here. Here's another great example. Um, this was one from one of our traders uh, oh, probably a few years ago. This looks like uh, December 14, uh, uh, ZB or ZN. ZB, I would. Uh, ZB, uh, 30 year. So you see here we have resting paper here. It, it's been here for a while. If I could show you further left there, you'd see that it had been there for hours. Notice the short-term market makers here pushing and pulling price around. Okay. Notice it, this liquidity comes here. This liquidity trades. The short-term algo is trying to push paper down into this additional resting paper. Unfortunately, they're not successful. And as soon as we break out of this sideways consolidation, we come back. Notice that the algos, instead of pushing from the top, now a few players on top, but most of the activity is coming from the downside. So instead of pressing from the top or stepping on price, now they're actually buoy buoying price or, or supporting price and pressing it as it goes up. And so uh, a real, real good example of the, the clarity of information you can see with Bookmap. And so here we're, we're going to talk about these shadows. And there's no importance to the algos that are making these shadows. So what you have to understand is they're really naive market-making algos. They're just designed to get to the front of the line. In a FIFO market, it's very important to get to the front of the line. So as you get to the front of the line, it's very, very important for these guys to do this. Okay? That, that's, again, 95% of the game. Whether they want to trade there or not is yet to be determined. But in a FIFO market... I've got to get to the front of the line to to be guaranteed that execution. You know, if price trades at that level, if I'm at the front of the line, we trade at that level, I get my fill. If not, I'm not guaranteed that fill. And so, what these bots do is they just stay away from the current market by a certain number of ticks, and and they they make a market. And as price moves up, they'll pull their lower number, their lower bid, and bring it to the top, and kind of moving the tail, so that they're securing their place in line. And that's real important for a number of reasons. Not that I'm going to act on that solely or by itself. Okay? But here you see boom, 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 boom. Notice this price pushes down here. The short-term market makers, you see them down here. They're getting out of the way. But notice right here, some guys, they, they, these guys didn't peel off. So just think like a fighter squadron of jets, you know. And so... You know, the squadron's coming down here, and boy, some guys peeled off and took this target. You know, this price comes back down here. Uh, I'm just not getting a whole lot of sellers. Price pushes back up. Now we got this target out. Some squadrons stay here and don't get out of the way. Um, very, very good information. Now, when I turn on, here's me making this electronic market with just a TTADL, Trading Technologies, Algo Design Lab Technology. Oops. And I'm just stacking the book here. I've got two contracts, uh, five levels off the offer, five levels uh, off the bid in each level. But this is the S&P. This is hundreds of contracts thick. So when you look here, my algo is not creating this shadow. I just created this algo just to highlight how the naive algorithms work, just to show you, just to give you insight into how the bots get to the front of the line. So as price moves up here, the lowest order is going to come to the top. So I don't lose my place in line with these. Now, other decisions would come in and would say um, when I don't want to move. Okay, that, that's a different decision. You know, when I don't want to move would be a different decision. Um, when I want to add my offers to, when I want to sell, this isn't going to move. It's going to stay still. So again, the, the advantage here is a, the ability to see the short-term market-making algorithmic activity in light of the longer time frame resting paper. When you see these two things, these are your battlegrounds. This is where things come together. So it's important, again, in a FIFO market, let's just talk about at a micro level how that happens. 100 lots come in and, and hit, the, you know, hit the bid. Okay, So a new market order for 100 uh, hits the bid. In this example here, we're looking at 62.75. I've got 20, 10, and 30. 
So that, to me, you know, with my dumb Texan math, that's about 60 cars, right? So this order hits the market, crosses the spread, it's the aggressor, immediately takes out this level and, and takes out another 40 cars below to, to get it into uh, state and fill that order completely. But when that sweeps that book, these orders, then this order, oops, this order goes to the front of the book. Okay, The bid widens until new orders come in and fill the spread. Okay, So we see this over and over and over again and again and again. Um, let me see if I've got some catch up on. No, we'll come back. Right, shows okay. So here's a real time example of the you know I think this was the DAX yeah uh, December 14 contract of the DAX market um, a market order for 40 contracts that hits the market the market's being bid at this level right here uh, I see seven orders being bid and then whew, a sweeping action takes the book down takes all these seven this one takes this six takes this eight takes these thirteen and takes four of these nine to complete that 40 lot order. Okay, So this is very, very, again, very detailed information that you can add because of these sweeping of the books, these are, this is usually when we're going to find that, that acceptance of a new level where we're going to sweep into a new level, maybe come back and test it as support or resistance, but it's usually the sweeping activity. It's also denoted when, we, when stops are run. Uh, you'll see that, that type of activity as well. So what do we do with all these levels? Every trader has a level. Okay? And so one of, my, uh, one of my favorite authors in trading is a guy named Robert Copley. He says, true trading mastery derives from understanding the relatively small role technical and analytical factors play in the overall trading process and the inestimably important role that correct attitudes and belief exert in facilitating a consistently profitable result. So what's that mean? Everybody's trying to, you know, uh, as I'm sitting here in Chicago and I'm looking at the L go around here, I'm thinking, you know, who's the best ball player every time? Who, you know, it's Michael Jordan, hands down. Michael Jordan will tell you hours and hours and hours, you know, he, you know, he'd just find the zone, okay? He'd find the zone, you know. How'd he get there? Lifetime of practice and, and born with exceptional skill, you know. But he found that zone. He, he had the right attitude and the right belief. I'm going to hit this shot. I'm going to float through the air 12 feet and slam this over this guy's face, you know. And so he had, he had the right tools. He, he wasn't a, a lone ranger, you know. And so uh, what, what do we do with these levels, whether it's a floor trader's pivot level or a Fibonacci retracement or wh whatever you're looking at. So, you know, most people are, are wanting uh, tomorrow's newspaper today. They're, they're the holy grail seekers. Um, you know, they want to know what price will do, okay. And I don't know, you know, I don't know anybody that, that really consistently knows what price will do outside of the, the super sub-second time frame. Mm -hmm. But most of that's a belief or a bias, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so, so my challenge to you is why not ask where are the battlegrounds? Where are the likely areas of conflict as price moves up and down during an auctioning process? What directions are the ants going? If you think about ants and a stream of ants carrying like leaf cutter ants in the Amazon jungle, uh, just carrying bits and pieces of, of leaves that they've chewed off, marching in, you know, six wide, the thousands and thousands of them. That's what the markets do. They, they just march very quickly uh, directionally until they receive stimulus that says, hmm, I can't march this way. Sometimes they'll just march right into it. They'll get eaten, stepped on, uh, whatever, meet their demise, but continue. Sometimes mm, the, whole, the whole stream of ants will then change direction and start marching a different direction around the danger. Uh, a chess analogy, where are the pawns being sacrificed? A war analogy, where are the privates? Where are my frontline infantry battalions? Okay. So typically when we look at levels, you, you have four uh, re responses. And again, I can see these responses. The markets are fractal. So if I'm seeing this on a daily chart, I'm likely to see it on a sub-second chart too. The markets are fractal. Okay? So here's my line in the sand. Here's my level above price. And, and this option I call the too good option. That's where this option is picture perfect. It just goes right to the tick. Uh, if this number is 1950 even, it goes to 1950 stops and never comes back. Just immediately pukes off. And, and it's immediate pain or pleasure. And that's important. 
immediate pain or pleasure is important. Um, that, that's what drives new participation to come in. And so um, in this instance, the, the bulls that wanted this to break out and were long, they've got immediate pain. And the bears who are fading this zone, immediate pleasure. Okay. Option two is too cold. So it's like you stick your toe in the bath water. You draw a bath, you go outside to get some wood, you come back in, stick your foot in the water, and it's too cold. It's not warm anymore. Okay. Wow, it looks good, but oop, right back to where we came from. Not so picture perfect, not to the tick, no immediate gratification. Tells you it's, you don't have enough information. The, the battle is still taking place. So what's the other thing? It implies that there's another element to acceptance or rejection other than price. Maybe something that has an equal or greater influence. What could that be? If price isn't the determining factor, is it time? Option number three is too scared. Here's the level. Price never gets there. People come in and, and they're willing to accept the risk in front of this level and it just doesn't reach it. Again, not picture perfect, not to the tick, no immediate gratification. Uh, again, implies that there's something else there. Is it time? Is it the number of discrete events? Is it the volume that traded? You know? And then finally, you got the, the final option, which is, is too much. Okay. And this is like a hot knife through butter, folds like a cheap suit, right? Goes up to the level, barely pauses, sweeps the book, trades it, never looks back. Again, immediate pain or pleasure. So when you think about it, again, two of these options are going to give us immediate pain or pleasure. Option one, this one, and this one. Okay, so unless it's one of these two, uh, you, you don't have enough information. You still have a battle going on, okay? And so what, what's the answer? Is it fib numbers, astrological alignment, volume, discrete events? Yeah. Uh, the answer is just reality. It's just patience. It's just understanding that the markets are an evolving process. It's an auctioning process. And, and that auctioning process takes participants, willing buyers and willing sellers. Okay. And so here's a, we, we mentioned granular detail earlier. Here, here's a great example of some, some granular detail. And uh, I see some notes. Yeah, we'll, we'll jump over to a few things here in a minute. Um, 600, uh, I'm sorry, 6,173 contracts trading less than 200 milliseconds. That's a lot of contracts trading, and that's a very short period of time. Takes you about, uh, give or take, uh, 300 milliseconds just to blink your eye. And so, um, again, being able to see that uh, an order comes into the book, it's hitting the bid, it crosses the spread, and then it sweeps the book all the way down to here. So also a good example in real time how the UDP or the multicast quote data stream um, can lag the trade data stream. Notice our, our aggressor classification, these are red dots. We're showing that this is where the bid was. But even at this resolution where I'm 50 milliseconds, I, I still can't show you the granular enough detail because this stream is lagging. The, the, and that's just normal. At a sub-second level uh, on, a, on a retail API or, or a trade stream, um, you're going to have this lag in the UDP multicast of quote data, but the trade data, uh, again, usually is uh, in much better shape. Here's another great example here. In, in this one, we had 364 contracts that trade in less than 30 milliseconds. There were 270 distinct trade event messages received. And so, oops, sorry, wrong quick. So again, here you can see that orders came in, swept the book down from 38 to 28. The UDP, the multicast catches up, normalizes for a little bit, and another sweeping of the book down to this level. Now, just to give you perspective, remember, book map is a layer that lays on top of, uh, of the events underneath it. Um, so here is the 70th millisecond, and here's the 110th millisecond. You know, the trades started about 85 milliseconds to 110 milliseconds. We'll call it 115 milliseconds, about 30 milliseconds in time. So these are not human viewable events, but Bookmap makes them human viewable. But probably more importantly than that, it sure does build a lot of confidence for you in what you're looking at that in real time that information is being handled and classified properly. So it, we, we talked about those four states a while ago, you know, uh, to, you know picture perfect, uh, too cold, uh, too good, you know, uh, too scared, right? The reality is, depending on what time frame, if this mock of a chart here is a three-minute time frame, well, price may go up five more ticks and then pause and then come back down. If this is a, a daily time frame, it, it's probably going to have more waiting. You know, in statistics, 
the, the, the longer the interval, the less noise. And so uh, just keep that in mind. So I also see this happen at a, a very short time frame, even sub-second time frame. So in this instance, it's picture perfect to the number, retraces. And so I always say, and really, if this is the battleground and this is the area that we've defined in the book as being a lot of liquidity, then you know we know there's a battle there. We know that there's a battle. Okay. I'm looking in these areas here. I'm looking in the circles. I'm not looking at the, at the battle taking place here. I'm looking at price because then only one of the possible scenarios where price actually goes through and doesn't stop and come back, do I actually need to look at this level. Everything else, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more than a single event. The first time we approach this level, yes. you know, There's one instance where it will just run. But the other types of activity you'll see don't have that. So train your eyes to, to not just look at the levels, but look at the action coming into the order book as we get away from these levels. And reality, the definition of reality, is the state of things as they actually exist rather than as they may appear or might be imagined. You know? And so again, I just urge you to take a step back, be patient, and look at the facts, factual information that bookmaps display. Because in real time, you know, again, we can slice through this level and come and never come back or it can look like this and just puke off, you know. But it's these areas here that I want to focus your attention to. Finally, we have multiple data columns on the right-hand side. We have user configurable columns. You can build uh, chart range or session range volume profiles, trade counters, the number of discrete events, quote counters, how many times was a level refreshed or not, quotes delta, uh, what's being offered or pulled, uh, what's being added or pulled from liquidity in real time, and then custom notes. And so what, what are some of the, the column applications? So I, I like comparing VWAPs. Uh, I'm also kind of a, a profile. I like looking at profiles. So I'll look for you know, low volume nodes, high volume nodes. Um, a lot of traders, I, I know Danny Boy's uh, you know, big with uh, delta charts and, and split volume analysis. You know? Um, you know, we, we have that ability here to, to show you that information in, in, the, in there. And again, the ability to granular, granularly identify these things. We also have one quick trading. It's an add-on right now. It may or may not become part of the platform inherently at some point. Right now it's an add-on. It gives you trade configuration options. Um, it allows you to actually place trades and, and manage those trades uh, directly from the heat map with some bracketing and some OCO type functionality. Um, you have various ways to display your options. And a good thing about Bookmap, and especially if you're a newer trader and just getting started, if you use Bookmap as that front end and, and you record your session and you record your orders at the same time, um, when, when you're doing that, you can use the replay mode and replay the entire market, including with uh, your orders. And so you're able to cancel orders, exit positions, place stop orders, and you can modify or change orders. So what are some of the, the best practices? Uh, what, what do you do to, to you know, start getting this worked into your area and the things that you're looking at and the things that you want to? Um, you're a Fibonacci trader, and you like the, the first breakout after the uh, opening range break. And so you know, well, well, how, how can we get to this? You know? So it says, you know, look, 10 days to book maps, adding advanced limit order book. Reduce brightness at first, leave it down for at least 10 trading sessions, no advance columns. Stay right there. I'm telling you, if you stay right there, uh, it, it'll pay dividends. And then use replay at least an hour you know, every evening. Um, replay it at a slower speed. Watch every little undulation, and, and, and you'll, you'll be very intimate with what you're looking at in really, in really no time here. And so let, let's go catch up on some questions here, and then we'll go look at some markets together. We catch up on these. Other retail platforms. No platforms listed on the website. And so if you'll visit this link here, and hang on a second. Let's just go to bookmap.com. Just scroll down until you see platforms. And it'll be listed there for you. Those are the platforms we support. If it's not listed there and it's a retail platform, we do not support it at this point. Um, so think or swim, uh, uh, TD Ameritrade, those things. And um, is, it, is it possible to know if a white area is more buy orders than sell orders? Um, yeah, uh, Dennis, if it's above the market, it's all sell orders. If it's below the best bid, they're all buy orders. This is the centralized limit order book. And so 
uh, underneath uh, this green line, those are buys in the market. That, that's it. Uh, above the, the red line, um, those are sales. We'll, we'll get to the book map live here in just a second. See if I can get any answers. Can you get a replay? Sure, Sammy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. When does the bracket OCO come available? I'll demo it today, Niels. Uh, it's 4.5 release, and so it won't be. Uh, it, it won't be. Uh, it won't be there um, until 4.5 is beta, which will probably be the next week or so. Um, Chris, this was sold as a live trading for the last hour. Not expecting an hour-long sales pitch. Chris, thanks for joining us. Um, you're under no obligation to stay with us. If you don't want to learn about Bookmap, I don't want you to know about it, my friend. Enjoy your day. Um, Bill got here late. Is there going to be a replay available? Yes. Um, Steve agrees with Chris. See you guys. Thank you. Um, that's the industry to sell stuff. Yeah, I I'm definitely not here for my health. So, uh, um, you know, this is a product, it's a business, this is America. If it can add value to your trading, I want you using it. If not, man, please don't let that door hit you on the way out, my friend. Okay. So let, let's, let's go look at some live markets since we have market attention deficit disorder here. Give me, give me one sec. Okay, for those of us that don't have market attention deficit disorder, and uh, and uh, so uh, again, I appreciate you, traders. Those of you that are interested in learning a little bit about Bookmap, I do appreciate it. And uh, uh, for those of you that uh, I was poking at, I certainly meant no offense. Uh, just all in fun. Uh, we're 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 there, and we're getting there. And here we are with the live markets here. Um, we're we're going into the close here, and so you'll see the book start to really thicken up as all your market on close orders start to come in around 10 minutes before the close. Um, you, you'll start to see um, the, the book really, really get thick. So right now, here's the current order book on the right-hand side. Um, these are the columns that we mentioned earlier, and, and here's the trading panel that we talked about. Let me just enable this and, and see if we can look at a couple of things real quick. Um, this is a sell order above the market. I guess uh, I'm in demonstration mode, so I must have had this resting here. So I'm just going to grab this with my left mouse click, grab it, drag it down, boom, and, and then that's done. So I'm still showing a position of one somewhere here. So I'm going to right click below the market. That's going to execute a market order right at the market just like that for me. Again, I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see what's going on there. So as we zoom back out, we see pay, we see price pushing down. We see paper staying in the market here and resting. But we see the brightest area of the book underneath price is down around this level here, second layer here. Notice liquidity coming into the book right here. Okay, and so again, you have a seller that's willing to sell as price is coming into this area at 81, right here. And so you see this uh, great stuff here. Uh, again, going to zoom in a little bit more. And I, I want to pay particular attention into this area down here. As we see a lot of activity. Uh, again, uh, the, the bid and the ask changes several times, and you can't even see it at that point. What I'm looking for is the activity here. Do, do I see sellers? Do I see people willing to cross that spread and sell as it's coming down here? Again, I've got no volume in this view right here. 25 trades that traded there. About 100 contracts traded at this 79.50 level. Exactly. 25 trades. 98 contracts traded. So we're going to go back up here. And guys, I've got a few markets running here. Let me show you what I've got if anybody that shows this. Um, I've got uh, got some uh, gold and uh, CL. Of course, these two markets would be aftermarket. I also have some NASDAQ running here. Um, this is being powered by uh, our partner, CQG Continuum. Um, uh, great, uh, great data source, great partners of ours as well as uh, our other partners as well. So as we zoom out here, we'll come look into this. And again, uh, you see the liquidity coming into the book. And you see this guy, he came there. Um, did, it, did it trade? Uh, I don't know. Well, sure I know. Uh, I can tell you exactly the number of trades that traded. I can tell you the exact number of discrete events down, down uh, to the, in this instance, six decimal places is a microsecond. This is a single trade for 500 lots that, that took place right here at 1981. 
and here's the it's the 52nd minute 37th second and 0 0.066695 microsecond that's when i received that so again we noticed this price was pulling down we we're kind of looking at this area didn't see a lot of sellers coming in don't see the sellers buyers sweep the book up it goes all the way back up to here okay so let's see how we come in here so we push into this liquidity. So like a moth to flame, price is going to be drawn towards the liquidity levels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at this point, you know, we're just watching. I see liquidity above us at 82. Um, high probability we're going to go test that here in just a little bit. Why do I say that? Look, as price comes down to this level and it's being offered at, at 81 quarter, look, the market swept up to the next level. When it's up to this level here, where do you see the action? Is the action coming on the bid? Well, people are willing to pay up for it. This is how markets move, right? People are willing to cross the spread and, and, and lift the offers, okay? So now we're at this 82 level. Does it trade? You know, how much of it trades? You know, 39 trades. 42 trades for 96 cars, 49 trades for 102 cars, 66 trades for 150 cars. You know? So this seller, this resting paper that was resting here and got more aggressive with his offer as price approached it, um, he, he got, his, got his fill there. Okay. So uh, he got his fill. The book swept down. Coming down here, do, let's look. Let's see. Do you see a whole lot of sellers down here as price is pushing down? Are they crossing the spread, at hitting the bid at 81 quarter? No, nope, they're not, you know. So what's the next magnet? Where's the next magnet? Well, if we can hold the bid, if we can hold 82 bid, again, if, if we can hold 82 bid, where's the next magnet, traders? What do you see above, 83 half? You know, trust me, this market wants to trade this. This is a lot of liquidity. There's 1,300 contracts. At a penny a at a penny a trade, that's what thirteen dollars for the NFA. That's uh, um, you know, I mean, that's I mean, th th that's how this industry makes money is on transactions, you know. And so you, you see this information here again. It's just like a moth to flame. I'm from Texas, so we say flies to stink, uh, you know. But uh, same difference, moth to flame, flies to stink. It's going to do its best to go see okay this is resting paper it's been here for a while uh, okay we got to trade this these are new highs for the session great we're going out on the highs great sure. yeah so again what's going to keep this from trading here well you know i'm going to need to see a lot of sellers i'm going to need to see red dots i'm going to need to see big sweeping action i'm not going to want to see people coming underneath the book here we go a little bit of selling pressure just a little bit you know, so what's the balance here? This is why I use the columns. This is what the columns are for. This is that information that's there, you know. So I don't know what your trading plan is, but, but let's just say that 1983 half, you've been waiting all day to sell 1983 half. Well, you're not the only guy at that party. You see, I got 1,319, 1,320 contracts, 1,340 contracts. Uh, it's getting more and more is being added, you know, as we approach this level. You're not the only guy there with that that idea so then you see these guys kind of front running kind of stepping in in front of hoping to get their fill in case this doesn't trade and price presses back down into here you also see the short-term market making algos in that presentation that i i put half the audience to sleep with and i do appreciate your patience but but you see the short-term market making algos they're, they're back here you know there there you see the shadow and now you see them getting more aggressive towards price right Okay, so does it trade? Yes or no? Let's ask, ask an answer emphatically. So far, I've got 18 trades for 49 trades, 210 cars, 56 trades, 210 cars, 62 trades, 263 cars, 80 trades, 300, 400 cars traded. Okay, well, I got 445 traded, 460 traded. Okay, 460 out of 1800. Did it all trade? Boom! Okay, now it trades. You know, let's go look at it. You know, let's ask and answer the question. You know, how much traded at that level? You know, well, 1,2360 total. 
just in this view right here. And when you go into the close, this number is going to get even bigger. All the dots are going to get huge because all the market on close uh, algos are going to come in and start hammering it at uh, hammering it right at the you know the last minute. So we got about another 15 seconds, and then you'll see the book get really thick, and then you'll see a lot of big dots as the the intraday position traders are under unwinding their positions into the liquidity going into the close this afternoon. Good stuff. Good stuff. I want to come back and, and catch any questions here that anybody has uh, again. And uh, I certainly hope that those that I was poking fun at earlier uh, see it as fun. Just, just, just trying to be, uh, just trying to keep it real, keeping it real. All right, coming back, looking at some questions, brackets and OCOs. Yeah, so we, we got brackets and OCOs. Uh, let's just look at a bracket. We're in a sim mode here. Um, I'm going to bid this right down here at 83. I'm going to offer that out at six ticks for a profit, four tick for stop. I also have trail stops that we can uh, we can show. Um, the OCO, again, depends on, on who you're dealing with. Uh, make sure you have server-side OCOs or not, and uh, you know, that can be a big deal. So here we go into the close, all the big dots taking place. And uh, boy, they traded that 83.50. You see people stepping in underneath it here and wham, big buy orders. Lots of shorts covering there right at the end of the bell there. So now look at look at the book. Look at the book. Is it near as bright as it was? No. Why is that? The bell rang. Okay. When you're looking at something like the S&P 500, there's... Uh, a number of venues that I can trade this. I can trade the underlying stocks on NASDAQ, NYSE, wherever they may trade, Amex, whatever. I can trade ETFs. I can trade SPX. I can trade cash. I can trade, you know, I mean, there, there's so many things out there when you're looking at something like the S&P that are out there um, that, that you can. So keep that in mind. But when you see the book go dark, and this is exactly what happens around news events, the algos just get out of the way. They don't want the risk. You know, these cash markets are closed. I can't go leg off on spider options. I can't go or on spiders or, or something. So I don't want that risk. So the algos just they just go dark. They're no longer willing to uh, make those markets. Some are. But again, you can see the comparative liquidity going into the close to where we are right now. Good stuff. Awesome traders, and again, uh, my apologies. Didn't mean to offend anybody. Didn't know what this was sold as, Chris, uh, especially to you. So uh, my apologies. I got dragged in. I believe Danny was uh, was going to be here with me this afternoon. We were going to do a little trading together, but something happened on his end. So we'll uh, we'll make that happen again. Mm -hmm. Any discounts? Any discounts uh, for attendees? Yeah, I'll make sure that you guys talk to Jerry. I don't know if you know Jerry over here at Mr. Top Step. Um, let me show you his uh, his contact info here. You know, so, so here, here's his phone number. Uh, price is two fifty a month. Um, Mr. Top Step's got some other you know things if you want to talk to them that they can hook you up with. Um, but but you got to talk to Jerry and here's his cell phone number. So uh, yes, for all of those that uh, can't believe that uh, I, I actually would would encourage you to purchase this product I, i'm encouraging you to um, and i'm encouraging you to because you get 14 days with it so those of you you know my trading style might not mimic your trading style chris or others and so you know put it next to your stuff your charts your symbols your setups your money your trading plan you know if it adds value welcome to the growing family of bookmap users thousands globally and growing daily okay um if it doesn't, man, I'm 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 sorry it didn't add value to you. No no harm no foul, no harm no foul. But I, I do appreciate your time. I, I know everyone has places that they could be rather than here. And again, don't know what it was billed or sold as, but uh, uh, you know, uh, Bookmap isn't your grandfather's charting platform. If you want to go back ten years, you know, in time, you know, when I was the the the, the first indicators on. Uh, you know, a ninja platform, you know, you know, and, uh, you know, great. That's your grandfather. But uh, here we are right here, right here, right now uh, with, uh, you know, multi-million dollar HFT technology. So you can put in your hands for, you know, 250 a month, you know. So 
we'll, we'll keep the live market up here and we'll just watch and, and see. Um, I'll, I'll try to maybe force, maybe force an issue and then and then grab a few questions here and then we'll wrap it up. And again, you've got my, my email address, but make sure you get to Jerry. Uh, call Jerry if you're interested. He'll give you the link and tell you how to get there. Okay, beautiful. Ouch, how would I trade this activity? Um, yeah, it really just depends. Uh, I'm not trading at five minutes before the close on a Wednesday in Chicago afternoon. So, um, again, uh, um, really just depends. I, I encourage you to get it, put it next to you, look at your uh, trades, your symbols, your setups in real time, um, evaluate it. If it adds value for you, uh, man, we're, we're glad. We're, 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 we're great that you're part of that growing crowd. If it doesn't, um, man, I, you know, I'm sorry. Thank you for your time. You know, uh, you know, we, we, we only want to add value. If we can't add value, mm, I wouldn't use it. Mm. Danny says he's in Houston, Texas native. Yes. Yes. Houston is good. Um, got a partner in Houston. Richard made a point in Sam. Good. Very good. Uh, Use on those can options be viewed this way. I need a centralized limit order book. Mike, Mike asks uh, stocks, futures, again, you, anything with a centralized limit order book can be. Um, so, so we need a we, we need a centralized limit order book. So anything with a centralized limit order book. So if you have an aggregated order book of feeds uh, for equities, mm, yes. Um, options, yes. Again, but you, you have to have that. So. Uh, um, Amy says, stop worrying about the the naysayers. They were short the spiders yesterday. <laughs> Good one, Amy. Good one, Amy. Um, Neil says, yeah, Danny's internet got, got cut off again. Sorry, he was supposed to be here with us, and, and we were going to do some trading into the close together, I guess, was the, the thing. But in lieu of that, uh, I apologize. You had to sit through my boring presentation and a few minutes of stuff. But, uh, again, send me emails. Um, love, to, love to hear from you personally. Um, Looks good. What are my settings on the volume dots? Volume dots are really, yeah. You know, I mean, it's really a personal preference. I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked that question because it's, it's a good question to ask. Um, you know, it, it, the thing that you have to understand again, it's two layers: a, 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 a complex event processing engine, and then the visualization layer. And so what I mean by that, most charts are tied to an interval. So this is a 33 tick chart. If I want something else, I got to change it. I got to reconnect. I got to bring new data in. I got to repopulate. But map's not that way. It's very quick. It's very fast. Okay. What you're looking at is a charting or a visualization layer that's being refreshed in this instance every 50 milliseconds. Okay. So that's 20 times a second is what I'm refreshing this. Okay. Now you're looking at this through a screen share. So I don't know that it'll get you where you need to be, but um, but but in real time, this is like a 3D HD movie playing on my screen. Very smooth, very slow, no no jumpy. It's very efficient. Now, if I've got a high powered machine, which I happen to be on right here, I can crank this number down to eight milliseconds, so I can refresh. So that's how often the chart refreshes, not the data. The two are separate, and that's real real important. You know, the two are separate. I can refresh this thing 125 times a second, okay, which is like twice the quality of most, you know, 3D games and that, you know, that type of stuff, you know. So, uh, again, you have the ability to, to set it. So if you're on older technology and you don't have new GPU, don't worry about it. Great. You want to give it a try? Make sure you just come in here and uncheck the GPU acceleration and you'll be good to go there, okay. Now, the other setting that I wanted to bring up and talk about was a little bit about the volume dots. So we, we sit above above price. We zoom in. I zoom out. I'm not having to reload anything, although I'm actually changing an interval of what I'm looking at. I'm bringing in additional information, right? Okay. So I'm able to zoom in, zoom out. No, no need to rehook up to data. No need to get anything else. So what we do, what we actually do is we take one pixel width, depending on your resolution of the screen, one pixel width, so just a single pixel, and we can draw information on a single pixel, like this single one trade, one contract right here at 8350. Okay. Now, as I zoom out, I'm obviously putting that pixel, which was only visible at this, you know, sub-second level. I'm actually putting that information together with other information, and I'm showing you the net delta. 
So as you look here, you know, kind of a mixed bag. You know, I, I know that it's a large trade and I know it's translucent or somewhat transparent. So in this instance, there, there's more than a single trade underneath here. But if I'm viewing this, and let's say that my chart or my map refreshed like every five seconds or something horrible like that. Well, then everything that happened between then and the last five seconds gets the last five second timestamp. And it's just, again, so don't think of it as a normal chart. And, this, and so one way that I use these volume dot, dots in filtering is I like this right here. So you got minimal accountable pixel size. So if I want to see all trades that took place that were at least at least 30 contracts, a single event, single trade that had at least 30 contracts in it, that, that's what these dots are. So every one of these dots had at least 30 trades in it. Okay. If I want to see trades that had at least 300, a single trade for $300, for $300, 300 contracts, then, then only these dots are going to have that. Okay. It doesn't matter if I zoom in or I zoom out. That's a single event that had 300 contracts at least that traded. Okay. Okay. Not a whole lot of those. Usually those are, are people bailing on positions more than, than entering those positions. So, and then next you've got, so, so I, one, one contract traded, but how many need to trade in a pixel width or in whatever the minimal slice of time that I'm looking at right here? So if I change this to 200 and then apply this, or 2,000, okay. So that's very interesting. Let's say we put it to 2,000 here. You see the large dots here. You see the large dots here. But watch as I, as I zoom in, these dots will go away. Why? Because it doesn't represent 2,000 contracts that traded in this short a period of time any longer. It's gone. Nothing wrong with the program. It's doing what it should do. So let, let's say you like looking at a five-minute time slice, you know. So you're going to look at a five-minute time slice. So in a five-minute time slice, are you going to see that type of information? Are you going to see those consolidated areas? You're going to want to go back, scroll in, scroll out, you know, find those areas of interest to you. So to me, I like using that second filtering option here. Uh, I like doing 250, you know somewhere around there, but it really just depends. It depends on the time of day. It depends on the market you're trading. So, you know, until you really get really, really comfortable and confident with what you're looking at, I really just suggest actually just turning the volume dots off completely, you know, just, just understand the liquidity, understand liquidity coming into the book. It's resting, this resting paper at 83.50, you know, it, it, it definitely traded. You know, but but look at it like a like a magnet, you know that type of thing. And so, the volume dots there, there's no magical setting. Some have done some statistical analysis on that, and they like to set theirs based on the the, the average number of contracts that are required to to make a three point rotation or a five point rotation or, or something along those lines. Um, but but you're you're more than welcome to set them. But until you get started, I, I don't think there's there's any super magic super secret sauce there. Uh, but you can filter it once you understand how this works. So I only want to see areas where 10 lot trades, trades of 10 lots or more, and at least two of at least two of those trades do that, right? So you know, if I go to a 10 lot and 20 contracts traded, apply, boom, close. So I'm only going to find places where 10 lot trades and, and two of them traded. And you're going to be hard pressed to find that, even on something like the ES today. Um, and th there's a real reason for that, because the algos don't—they they really don't like those blocks. They don't like to go in blocks. They uh, let me turn my dots back on. Sorry. What 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 they really like are machine gunning, you know, single single orders, single market orders. You know. So I play around with it. Um, if you go to like a one lot up here, and then maybe a twenty. Or 300 lot, or some, you know, some, if you're trading crude, maybe it's 19, or you know, you, you know your markets. If you don't, um, you know, then probably probably not prepared to use something like Bookmap if you don't know the mar that market. And and so either just keep it very simple, you know. And, and I say and I say that just realistically. In other words, you know, you, you should have a feel for the market. Is what I mean. You should know that you know crude when the volatility's up. Um, 
you know, it, it's swinging in 50, 60, you know, tick swings, you know, the S and P, you know, my gosh, we got 50 handle moves, you know, uh, off lows and 50 handle sells off the highs. So, you know, uh, the volume is, is flexible over time. It's never a constant, you know, and it's, it's really tied to volatility. So if you can find that, that area that you like, and so what I kind of like is to see, you know, where, where I can really see the, those areas. And I'm kind of looking for those hung or those stuck traders where there's a lot of activity, you know. So I'm looking for big, big red dots at the lows, big, big, big yellow dots ahead. I'm sorry, Jerry. Oh, thank you for those that are signing up. Jerry's telling me some, some of you guys are, are – uh, are already signing up and so uh just uh for mr top step they just want to reach out and say thank you as do i i appreciate that so let me see any final questions and then we'll wrap this up and we'll do another event uh, with some more trading stuff again sorry so much somebody asked about a discount yeah to call jerry or click on the link. That, that's what it is. If you need something more than that, you're going to have to talk to Jerry. Um, Speedy says, my grandfather never saw a chart. <laughs> that, that's funny. I, I don't know, man. I've got charts going back to 1896 on the Dow. So, uh, you know, he, he may have seen something. You know, you never know. But I, I, I can assure you he didn't, see, uh, he didn't see this bad boy, you know, with this granular level of detail. And, it, again, it's important. Um, you know, you need to have confidence. And, and the separation of layers is really what separates us from anything that might even look sort of like a heat map for price and, and time uh, and for the evolution of the order book. You know, again, just, just ask them to zoom in. Just say, hey, can I go zoom in on this level? And can you tell me exactly how many trades took place here? Now, even with this filtering here, I've got, you know, down, now I'm down to microseconds. Okay, single, single trade, one trade. 500 contracts no no doubt i mean this is the information that you have this is the information that you received this is what your machine received in real time um, no doubt about it no doubt about it very factual zoom out great how, how does that how, how do i see that in the mix of everything else you know again well this is where you know some of these filtering of dots looking for big activity good stuff good stuff Neil's good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thirty year, Mike. Don't have the thirty year up today, but um, you know, again, my suggestion is put it on your desktop. Look at it and see what you what you've got there. Dan asks, you have a recorder where you go through trades. Dan, you really need to talk to Danny or, or our educational partners. We're a platform. Uh, call E-Trade and ask them, you know, where you're supposed to put your stop and see what answer they give you. Could I talk about iceberg detection? Da Danny, uh, Riley, and, and the, the great guys in the IM Pro room and, and here at Mr. Top Step, that, that's what they do. They're, they're the educators. We're the platform. Um, Bill says, could I talk about iceberg detection? Yeah, Bill, it, it's really not iceberg detection. You know, it, it's really... Uh, li liquidity detection and, and areas of liquidity that trade that were not in the limit order book. That's the easiest way for me to explain that to you, Bill, is that we're just going to highlight and show you a red number over in the COB column if you have a bars set up there um, where, where trades traded okay, and there wasn't matching size on the other side of the order book. Okay. And so that's really, that's really what that, what, what that is. The, there's no, you know, again, it's an algorithmic detection. Um, you know, we do our best uh, there to give you that information. Um, sometimes it's really obvious, and you can go back and look on YouTube at some videos where we, where we caught some really obvious things. But um, most of the time, it's going to give you two bits of information. So let's say we push up into here, and there was 50 contracts available, and you saw a 250 red number right here in the, the COB call, you know. Well, I mean, you know, then, you know, 150, you know, or 250 contracts traded at this level um, that, that, that was not liquidity. There was no matching liquidity on the other side of the book.
Um, in fast market conditions, orders are mashed without ever having to hit the book. If I place a limit order to, to, to buy above the market, that's immediately matched, right? And so as new liquidity comes in at that level, then unless it hits the book and is resting as an order, um, it's going to get matched instantly. Okay, and so uh, two things. Either you've got somebody that's defending an area or is reloading. I don't know if they're defending or offering out or new liquidity, old liquidity, et cetera, et cetera. No, have no clue. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, there were orders that traded, contracts that traded that didn't have matching liquidity in the book. Or uh, you had sweeping conditions where, where the market just took several layers out, several levels at once. Either one, you've got an indication of fast conditions where more liquidity is coming into the book and it's trading faster than it can be replenished. Or you actually have someone who's reloading at a particular level. Either way, I think it's, it's decent information. It's not my favorite add-on indicator. My favorite add-on indicator is the large lot tracker. Um, that one's my favorite. Speedy, resting paper is where you want to trade. Speedy, resting paper is a battleground. Um, I can go back here. Let me go back to that, that really. Let me go back here and show you. Yeah, it work on Mac. Yeah, I'll have to use parallels. You know, but but it works. We have lots of users that use it on Mac. Um, so you know, again, my my thing is, you know, look. Okay, so so the resting paper is where you want to trade. No, the resting paper is just resting paper. Okay, you know, uh, I, I, my challenge to you is instead of looking at every level in the book as if it's support and resistance, which it's not. It's not good that way. It's a battleground. Does it trade? Yes or no? You know, the, these are the questions. So go back and go back and review this. We'll see if we can't make this available to you guys. Um, maybe we'll send it out in an email. This, this PowerPoint, you guys can look at it. But go back and look at some of that because I, I address that and I talk about that di directly. Uh, Harinder, talk to uh, talk to Jerry if you're interested in anything. You need you need to talk to Jerry. Have you already talked to Jerry, Harinder? Talk to Jerry. Do you know Jerry? Let me give you Jerry's number here. Do you know Jerry? Let me give you Jerry's number. Okay, I want you to have Jerry's number. You've got questions you're asking me and, and that I'm not answering. And so if you want to call Jerry, here's his phone number. Call Jerry, 1-630. Let me copy and paste it in the chat for you here. 1-630-421-9750. Talk to Jerry. He'll answer any and all questions. Will it work on a map? Mac? Yes, uh, Kevin, you need to run parallels or something else like that. What's the CVP setting? CVP, all the columns on the right-hand side, either session or call or call chart range. STC is session trade counter. CTC is chart range trades counter. So as you hover your mouse over here, it'll tell you exactly what it is. So CVP is a chart range volume profile versus an S session range. Don't forget that your session starts when you connect to Bookmap. So when you launch Bookmap and then you select a symbol, as soon as that symbol goes from gray to black right here, that's the beginning of your session. So one new feature in 4.5 if you want to, um, a very, very nice feature, is you can actually schedule this um, uh, to reset. So you want it, you want it to, to happen every day at 8.30 a.m. You want to reset it? Great. You just put it in here. You want to add another time? You want it to shut off at 3.30 Central every day? Add that right here. Boom. Done. You know, so we, we continue to add more and more, um, you know, requests and features uh, from the users out there. And so I just want to make sure that you understand that session, session range. So if you want to make sure session range over here matches regular trading hours or an RTH session at the exchange, then you're going to want to set this refresh time to, you know, 0830 or 0829 uh, and 59 seconds or what, whatever your, your preference there is. But that'll, that'll allow you to, to line that up with the, the sessions, if that makes sense. Sweet. Beautiful. Thanks again for everyone who signed up. That's it for me. Traders, appreciate it. Next time we'll get Danny Boy on here and uh, and get his insights. And, uh, again, apologies for anyone that uh, 
uh, might have been offended. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, meant no offense, but uh, hey, man, it, it is, it, it is, it is what it is. And so uh, I appreciate your patience, and I appreciate you joining us this afternoon. We know you have choices, and, and if this is a choice that, that you'd like, we we'd love your business. Otherwise, um, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, you know, thanks for giving us your time. Really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you again.